for my final video on rotations. Yeah, I know, I know, this is really sad. My final video on rotations. <sighs> I wanna talk about work. The definition of work is it's the integral of force over distance. In a rotation though, <clears throat> Force is spoken about as torque. And let's think about, mm, I don't know, let's make a little concrete example right here. Let's say that there's an enormous pulley with an axle right here. This is the axis coming out of the page. And there's a rope that's wound around it, brown cord of some sort, quite a bit. And uh, let's say it's gonna tend to rotate counterclockwise so we can have positive torque. And down here, there is a bucket and let's say that the bucket is, uh, well, we can get a nice blue bucket, and it's full of uh, monkey blood. Okay, don't ask why, it just is. Somebody's gotta haul that up. Or maybe it's falling down. So this is some kind of Indiana Jones thing, and uh, the monkey blood is falling down, but suffice it to say that there is some tension the tension in the cable I'm gonna call T. And the radius of the pulley I'm gonna call capital R. So I'd like you to consider what's going on here in this equation. In circles, we're gonna change it just a tiny bit. Let's go blue for this. It's still going to be an integral and it's still gonna have force in it, but when you cause a circle to turn, you're actually moving in S. And we know that S is, well, in this case, it will be R times theta. I'm gonna use a capital R for this situation. Of course, it would just be a lowercase r if we were doing something different. But it's then F dot, well, ooh, it's dot D R theta. And in the situation where R is not changing, I can pull that sucker out. And then, I, ooh, gosh, what are we gonna do about this dot product thing? Oh, good news. The force is always this way, and it's always the direction of S also. It's direction of the arc length that the circle will be traveling. So we can eliminate the dot product. We don't need any sines or cosines. That's actually a really pleasant thing for circles. You always know which direction it's going. It's either going this way or that way. It can't do X, Y, Z things. <clears throat> so let's continue this derivation. I'm gonna pull out an R, and now it's going to be R times F D theta, interesting. Have you ever seen that R times F construction? I have. Check it out. For circles, R times F is actually torque. So we need to integrate torque over angle. That's what work is for circles. Hmm, cool. So <clears throat> you are probably thinking, wait a second, I haven't quite grasped calculus, so I can write it for you in a non-calculus form. Work is torque times how much the angle has changed. It's so similar to the non-calculus definition of linear work, and that is force times how much the distance has changed. All right? All right, let's do a little calculation. Let's assume that this starts from rest and the monkey blood begins to accelerate the pulley. The pulley has some mass, et cetera, et cetera, but we can just refer to it as the moment of inertia of the pulley. I'm gonna say it has a moment of inertia. <clears throat> so we'll write down that work, ooh, wait a second, didn't we say that work is changing kinetic energy previously? It still is. When work is done, kinetic energy is changed. So since work is changing kinetic energy, it's gonna be K final minus K naught, and that is equal to torque times delta theta. Can we find out what the, uh, what the torque is over here? Torque on the pulley. The torque on the pulley is just R times the tension. Now, let's slow down a little bit. Is the tension equal to the weight of the bucket? I'm gonna leave that as a thought for you. You have to really think about this. We're gonna do a lab on this, and so you'd better understand the, whether the torque is actually equal to the weight. Is the tension equal to the weight of the bucket? Okay, but let's, uh, we can definitely use this, whether we understand that or not, we can certainly use this statement right here. 
So I'm about to ask you if you can, uh, ooh, what is the change in kinetic energy? If the initial kinetic energy is zero, the final kinetic energy, well, the final kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. That's the kinetic energy of the pulley, okay? So we can then write that torque times change in angle is the final kinetic energy, and it is one half I omega final square. So we can solve this for omega final. Let's do it, omega final. We're gonna get two times torque times delta theta, and we're gonna have to divide it by I, and then we're gonna have to screw it. But torque is simply equal to R times T, so we're gonna get two times R times T times delta theta, divided by I will still all be screwed in. Ooh, wow. What if we solve it? <laughs> what if we solve it for the angle that has turned, the angular displacement, during some amount of time? And we can use the kinematic equations we derived in a previous section. This is how far the wheel will have turned. It's going to be R times T over two times I, this quantity multiplied by the time it's been spinning, square. So this looks like one half of an acceleration, right? RT over I looks like an acceleration. And because the initial velocity, the initial angular velocity was zero, we have this simple result right here. Let's see what this looks like. This says, if you let time go on, it will go faster and faster because that's a non-linearity, right? The more time goes on, the more change in angle happens dramatically. Also, if the radius is bigger, then the angle change will be bigger. And if the tension is bigger, then the angle change will be bigger. I think all of that is consistent. What about if the moment of inertia is bigger? If the moment of inertia is bigger, then the angle will be smaller. Oh dear. This aura is just a pure R, but I depends on aura. So maybe these auras are going to kind of cancel out for a pulley. So it is probably independent of the radius of the pulley. And uh, finally, we want to take this, take this delta theta, and plug it in right there. <laughs> okay. And I will get, finally, that the final angular speed is, oh, check this out. We're going to get, oh my gosh, we've got all kinds of stuff. Square, we got R times a T, and then it's going to be screwed. So I'm going to get a nice clean R out and a nice clean T out. <clears throat> Notice I'm plugging in a 2 right here in the denominator, so the 2s are going to be gone. I've got another I in the denominator right here to multiply by that I that's inside this group. And so those guys will combine and give me a 1 over i right here. And I just need to multiply this stuff by the time. That is a beautiful thing. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. All right, that's it.